dass es trotzdem Warentemperatur noch hierher geschafft hat und vom Workshop zurückgefunden hat. Wie der Titel sagt, ähm, es geht über Scalable Cloud Storage using ClusterFS. Äh, wir haben einen Vertreter der ähm, Distributed Storage System oder File Systems vorhin gehört, beim Switch-Vortrag. Ähm, dort kam dann ZEP zum Einsatz. Ich werde jetzt mal den Konkurrenten vorstellen, den wir bei uns im Einsatz haben. Ähm, zuerst ein bisschen etwas über uns. Ähm, eben, ich bin von der Stepping Stone hier in Bern. Ähm, Im Vergleich wahrscheinlich zu einer Ihrer Unternehmen eher klein. Ähm, auch ein bisschen was über mich, damit, wir, damit Sie den Kontext eigentlich sehen. Ähm, Fragen? Okay. Um, I've been asked to do it in English, so I hope my English is understandable. Um, as I said, I will first uh, talk a bit about us and about me. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, afterwards I will go into the details, what is ClusterFS, what can it do for you, uh, what can you do with it. Um, then how we are using ClusterFS in our company, a uh, bit use case of it. Uh, then a short introduction from zero to hero, how you can use it. Uh, San, uh, Sandro earlier brought the issue or the, the task, it has to work for a startup. So this is, this is, what is what it is about. And in the end, I will also do something for those who have to grow large and in the task become legendary, how you can scale it up, how you can uh, tune the performance a bit. Won't go too much into details from the technical side. And in the end, in case you need help, I don't think you, you do, it's, it's rather simple. It's a simple concept and it's very stable. In our case, um, there are some links and some, some hints what you can do. Okay, um, about us, we are on the market for more than 10 years now. We are mostly doing uh, service and advice in, in engineering and automation, the IT um, environment, with uh, emphasis on open source based solutions, meaning we are really using uh, open source solutions only where it is possible with a few exceptions, of course, and have our own expertise there. We are, besides that, operating our own Swiss-based cloud, uh, cloud in the sense of virtual machines, but also um, customize uh, PAS, Platform as a Service for our customers. Um, so it's this really a mix between uh, standardization and uh, individual stacks for our customers as, as they need it. Uh, my role at Stepping Stone is mostly, uh, yeah, probably fit in the DevOps um, niche. I'm myself an open source enthusiast since more than 15 years. Uh, for 10 years or so, I'm a developer at the Gentle Linux distribution. I don't know, it's a smaller distribution which builds its packages from source on, on the hosts, usually. We are not doing that anymore. It would be the idea. And yeah, I've also did some contributions to other open source projects uh, in the form of um, writing patches, testing, documentation, etc. About ClusterFS. Um, you've heard Seth before. ClusterFS is an alternative to it. It is open source, of course. Um, it is, can replicate content and distribute it all as well. It is a file system, meaning on the server end, you basically have a file system you share. And the first or one of the first um, use cases of it was that you can simply mount it on our other system. In that uh, regard, it was similar to NFS. Uh, it has an extensible and stackable design, which uh, makes it really adaptable to your needs. So you can mix uh, the features it has you can also all the backends um, as you want, and especially it runs on commodity hardware. So you can really re reuse your um, default storage server you had. You don't have to buy anything new, and this makes it really worthwhile to look at. And this also leads, besides other factors you see uh, afterwards, um, that the vendor lock-in is minimized to a, to a real minimum for ours. 
Brown point of view. Uh, at the server level, you basically uh, reuse existing technology, so you don't have um, some kind of container there, but you're re really using the proven file systems you have on Linux, meaning uh, XFS or, for example, extended 3 or 4. Um, you can basically use many things there as long as it's POSIX compatible and, that support, uh, and supports extended attributes. Meanwhile, you can also uh, directly export logical volumes you know from, from the logical volume manager. And of course, it uses uh, well-known protocols to communicate uh, means at that level, uh, SSL for encryption if you want, and uh, an RPC mechanism which is, uh, has been proven to be useful in NFS as well. So, what can you use it for? Uh, on one thing, it's, or at our place, it is used as a storage backend for virtual machines. Of course, if you can put a file on it, it can also be a, a KuCow or a raw image, a raw file you can use, but there are better alternatives to it. I'll show you later. And it can, of course, be used as a distributed file system as a replacement or alternative to the usual TIFFs and NFS servers you probably know. And by now, using the API they, they built, you can also use it as a more general object store. Furthermore, it has additional features like data replication on a per volume basis. You can also distribute your volumes, meaning that one part of, uh, of your data in a, in a file system or in a volume is on one server, the other on the other, um, giving you increasing performance, hopefully. You can also uh, stripe or distribute your single files on different servers. And as a connection, on the connection level, you can reuse your existing Ethernet infrastructure and switches if you like. You can also go to InfiniBand if you have it or if you want um, some promises regarding latency and bandwidth. For us, why did we decide to use ClusterFS? Uh, at the time when we decided it, Ceph wasn't ready for us. At least it looked complicated. Um, you needed to make sure that your uh, metadata um, is also distributed, etc. And ClusterFS was in that regard rather easy to set up. So you can really set up on, on one server, add another later, and still being able to change the configuration of your, of your volumes. Uh, we use it mainly as a VM storage backend. Really, the, our images of, the, of our virtual machines are on, on a cluster uh, file system cluster, replicated, of course. Um, over two different sites. We also implemented a multi-tier architecture in, in the same cluster. You have uh, a mix of, of SSD-based arrays in, in one server and uh, the large SATA disks in, in the other. And you can decide on a per-volume basis where you want to place your data. And also, yeah, how you want to scale it. Um, at a reasonable price, for us at least, this is if you would now go to um, Digitech, Brock, whatever, and try to order a server you can use productively for, um, for cluster FS. So two nodes, replicated setup on each, uh, 24 terabytes, cost you about 20,000 Swiss francs. Probably less than a, than a SAN, and probably a bit more than you, you switch guys probably pay. I guess so, yeah. As I said, this is if you would go and buy a single or two single servers. Other reasons why we choose ClusterFS. Uh, we can reuse our hardware, as we heard. We can use standard hardware. There's nothing too fancy we have to um, take care of, of course. Um, good network interface cards are important. We are using uh, 10G cards by now and uh, accordingly such as which, the possibility to scale freely, the possibility to being able to um, decide on a per volume basis whether we want to replicate or we want to distribute the data or mix of both if we have four nodes in it <coughs> at least, uh, makes it really interesting for us and helped us a lot to grow 
uh, in the past few years. And of course, reducing the complexity is an important part in our side. Um, if you have a large IT group, then you probably don't care that you have to uh, have some specialists for maintaining um, fiber channel fabrics or whatever. Uh, in our point of view, this is, this is ra rather a crucial point um, to being able to reuse the same technology. And here it's ClusterFS for our storage uh, based things uh, in, different, in different levels of, of the as a service array, uh, of the as a service model. So now we are at the stage where we want to start building our server. Um, most of the companies I saw up to now, they start with, with a single NAS, usually a Synology thingy. Um, let's assume they have a bit more. They have a single server uh, for the storage and some <coughs> application servers on top using that storage. Uh, after a while, let's assume that, that they use ClusterFS, of course. Um, after a while, they see, okay, we probably have to increase our availability of it or make it a bit more safe. So they wanted to introduce replication. On ClusterFS, it's basically three commands. Uh, set up the new server, of course. Peer it with the other one. Reconfigure or configure your volume. You want to replicate or distribute over the servers. You can choose. And then take that volume online and mount it on the, on the clients. Well, that bound step, we can, we can also reduce away. OK, now your business is working and it's, it works better. You have to replace your hardware. You have to scale out. You will need more storage. You need more uh, capacity. So what you can do, you can add even more servers and start to migrate your volumes as you see fit. You can do failover, of course. This is automated. Um, if one node fails and comes back, it uh, resyncs it if you have replicated it. And you can pretty much scale it in, in every way you want. So, you're basically the hero now. Um, you've saved time, you've saved money, and you have time for other things to do. So, next things become legendary. Uh, the problem of, of having a fuse mount, I don't know whether you know it, is uh, yeah, the, that level of indirection you have there. So, you can optimize it that way if you start implementing the ClusterFS on your application level. So we are using KVM for virtualization, and there you have a backend, which makes it possible that the KVM process, which is uh, responsible for running your virtual machine, can directly ac access the cluster, uh, the cluster cluster, or the cluster volume where the images of your virtual machine are lying on. This gives a nice performance boost, and in our setup, it also increased the reliability and um, there's also problems of, of locking when you try to migrate or of caching when you try to migrate via uh, virtual machines between nodes. This is all being taken care of now. Um, then you can go a level up and can say, okay, um, why, if I have a web server, why do I have to mount the file system in it if only Apache uses it or the UWSGI <coughs> application web server, uh, application server uses it? You don't. There are now a proxy module for Apache coming up, and UWSGI also supports it so that they can directly attach your servers to the Gloucester file system. More features. Um, as I said before, GlosterFS has, has a rather modular and flexible, uh, but still simple design. So it permits to implement easily on other, uh, other features. For those who know C or C++ and want to take a look, I really recommend to, to look at some of the simple modules to see um, how straightforward that can be. So what's, what's coming up, or the world, what's available now is uh, encryption on the server side so that you really encrypt transparently uh, your data, compression over the wire so that the communication between the cluster cluster and the clients are compressed which is also important if you do some gear replication and have to pay for your bandwidth. Snapshotting features coming up uh, and much more. Especially important are there um, to note the, the direct support 
of tiers. So uh, this, they think of implementing some kind of, of measure for your storage, such a way that Gloucester is able to um, distribute your storage depending on whether a file is used uh, often, it has to be accessed often, or not. So it really makes it automated, uh, an automated movement between uh, fast and, and slow storage. Summary. Um, for us, and possibly for you, it is one tool for all your storage needs, as you saw. You can pretty much anything. You can scale in, in almost every direction. You can use or reuse the existing technology. There's no, first, nothing in addition you have to know if you don't want it. And it's really flexible. In case you need help. Um, to our experience, the online chat where developers are hanging out um, is quite a good point. They respond very actively. You have an open bug tracker in case you find a bug. There are some, although. Um, you have the mailing list. Of course, there is a user group as of now uh, here in Switzerland. And by now, there are also big companies like Red Hat behind it, which give you commercial support if you want. And that's probably also the, the reason, maybe, because the Red Hat uh, guys didn't show up here, because we are already selling their product. Um, just a note, we are using Gentoo mostly on our servers, so we are not affiliated with Red Hat. Questions? I will also be here afterwards if you want to talk about it. Yep. So do you have any experience with um, like very large multi-petabyte deployments? No, not yet, not personally. No. Okay. According, according to the specs and developers and the setups which are supposed to be out there, it should scale up to there. Yeah, we've, we've just finished deploying a, or almost finished deploying, um, it, uh, a 1.2 petabyte cluster. Okay, and uh, how did it go? It works. I can I, I, I can go and do df minus h and I see 1.2 pay. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> 1.2 petabyte file system, and I'm trying to do something with it now. Okay, I would be interested to see that set up. Yeah, about the object store for ClusterFS, mm -hmm. uh, you said it's possible. Uh, I think that is done through the unified uh, file and object um, mm -hmm. layer. But is that an additional or external tool that you have to use, or do you have any, ex any experience with it? Um, no, we don't have direct experience with it. We are mainly using uh, the software which uses it. And yeah, in our case, the objects are still usually files. So we have to admit that um, we look at it as an object story in, in when we directly uh, attach, for example, uh, Apache to it, there are, other, there are still files. So I can't really answer your question, I'm sorry. How many object storage can you attach to it? Don't have the number. But more than two. Uh, object stores or storages or storages, storage. Yes. On your I slide, you already always had two object stores huh? for replication. Oh, for a replication. Can you replicate to? Um, yeah. As far as I know, you can scale up to to more than two. I'm not sure whether there is already a supported option yet. This is, um, this is something I have to admit. Some features are announced there, but when we are, te we, we are testing a, a lot of them by now, and some of them um, are not very well tested. There are the, the usual use cases you have, replication with two, um, distributing it, those are well, very well tested, but uh, concerning the, um, the scaling of the replication so that you can have a replica of three or four or more, um, this should be supported, but we didn't test it yet.
Can you compare it to this pre-replicated uh, device, to TRPD? Um, yes, uh, from our point of view, uh, the LustreFS basically integrates um, BRVD plus a cluster file system like TFS2 on top. Because if you're using BRVD and you wanna simultaneously access um, the data on both servers, you have to use a cluster file system on top to synchronize the access to it. And ClusterFS basically does that together. So you can't really separate it. From, is that 